I'm gonna show you exactly how to make this adorable velvet wristlet. And honestly, it takes me like 10 to 15 minutes to make. So super, super quick make, perfect for selling at markets. If you wanna learn how to make this, just keep on watching. Hey, hey makers, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cameron and like you, I run my own crochet business. Here on YouTube, I love helping fellow crochet business owners like you grow your crochet business through selling at markets. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention my velvet beanie pattern is coming out. I have five different sizes. They're coming out in all the sizes on February 14th, so on Valentine's Day. I mean, come on, it's pink, it's adorable. It kinda had to be dropped on Valentine's Day. If you're interested in growing your crochet business, be sure to subscribe down below because I post a new video every single Friday. We're actually gonna be using the same stitch that I use in this velvet beanie on this adorable little keychain. So I'm super excited to show you. It's the half double slip stitch. It's super fun, super easy, and it actually holds this velvet really well and prevents snagging, worming, all the bad stuff that people don't like velvet for. This stitch prevents it. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it, so just stay tuned. Okay, first things first, let's get together our materials. And as always, everything will be linked in the description box for your convenience. We're gonna need both a five millimeter and a 6.5 millimeter hook for this project. I'm using my furls hook because I am obsessed with my furls hooks. They are so comfortable. You're also gonna need some sort of keychain, swivel clasp, kind of deal. I'll link some options in the description box. I get mine in bulk off Amazon. You'll also want some Bernat velvet yarn. Honestly, you could probably use any medium weight yarn with this project. I haven't tried it with any other yarn, but I'm sure it'll work with a lot of different options. You'll also need scissors and a tapestry needle. Let's just get started. I'm going to start with doing a slip knot and I'm working with my five millimeter crochet hook. The only reason I switched to my five millimeter hook, by the way, is because I was having trouble getting my furls hook into the swivel clasp. I'll show you here in a second what I'm talking about. But if you can fit your 6.5 millimeter into this little thing right here, then you're good to go. You don't really need to use the five millimeter. That's just why I was using mine here. But what we're doing is we're working single crochets into our clasp. So I inserted my hook, pulled up some yarn, yarn over, and pull through the two on the hook. It's a single crochet, but we're working into the clasp. I'll show you a few more times here. I'm just going into the clasp, pulling up yarn, yarning over, and pulling through both loops on the hook. And we only need to do a total of four single crochets into our keychain. Also remember, if you choose to use velvet on this project, please remember to keep your tension as tight as possible. That's gonna really help prevent worming and snagging and all the things you don't wanna deal with. Of course, if you're selling this, it's really important to keep your stitches as consistent as possible. And that also helps prevent worming, snagging, all that jazz. After our four single crochets, I'm gonna switch to my 6.5 millimeter hook. We're gonna chain one, and I've already turned here, and we're gonna work back into the stitches we just did. And we're doing a half double crochet slip stitch. We're just gonna yarn over, insert our hook into the next stitch, and we're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that loop through the other two loops we already had on our hook. If you're familiar with a slip stitch, we're pretty much just doing a slip stitch, but we're yarning over before going into our stitch. I'll show you a couple more times, slow down, yarning over, inserting our hook into the next stitch, yarning over, pulling up that loop, and we're just gonna continue bringing it through the other two loops we already had on our hook. In my opinion, this stitch is one of the best stitches you can do with velvet. It really helps prevent snagging and worming, all those things I keep mentioning. This stitch is honestly amazing. Just be sure to keep your attention pretty tight and consistent. If you're planning on selling these like I do, I highly suggest making a few practice ones, trying them out, maybe even giving one to a friend to try out and just making sure that your yarn stays consistent and doesn't start getting all snaggy and wormy and all that stuff. Velvet can be kind of tricky to work with sometimes. Moving on to the next row and all of the following rows, we're just going to chain one turn and do the exact same thing we just did. We're going to half double crochet slip stitch four across the row. And we're gonna do this for the rest of the keychain. I told you, super easy and super, super quick. We're gonna be doing a total of 36 rows. 
And at the end of doing this, you'll see here in a second, it should be measuring about 10 inches, give or take. Once you get to the end of your project, we're just going to leave a pretty long tail, maybe a couple feet long, cut that off and fasten off our project. Now I'm gonna use our tapestry needle to pretty much attach these edges together. Super simple, super easy. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. I just fold my project in half just like this and I go in towards the stitches I just did through that last stitch. It's really hard to explain on this voiceover. You're gonna just kinda have to watch what I'm doing here, but I do that a few different times. So I do it and then I'm just gonna do it again right here. But the next time I come through, I actually travel back through the swivel clasp area. So as you can see here, I'm just gonna take my tapestry needle and come back through the swivel clasp, but not going through the project at all, just the clasp part to get to the other side in order to go back through both layers of the project and combine the two edges. I'm just gonna continue doing this until I feel like it's pretty secure. <laughs> I go back and forth probably a total of 10 to 12 times. And once I'm done, I actually take my tapestry needle and take the long tail I have on there still and bring it to the opposite side of the keychain. And I end up doing the same thing with the other tail that we have on there. Sometimes I'll take it and I'll go through a couple more times. So that's what I'm doing here, just securing the other edge and then um, taking it to the back side tying a bunch of knots, securing the heck out of it, and then you're pretty much good to go. I'm not gonna lie, I totally forgot to film an outro for this video, but um, yeah, this is my outro. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed the pattern. And if you love this video, I would love to keep hanging out with you here on YouTube. I highly recommend checking out this video. I'm gonna pop it on the screen right now. Next, this is how to make a scrunchie in literally five minutes. Another great market make. Again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.